Fifty years in science is a very long time, particularly during the last century when things happen so fast. When I started working just before that, the Pi Masson was discovered, which was considered to be responsible for forces between between protons and neutrons and so on, which kept the nuclei together. But after that, enormous number of discoveries happened, and it, one felt very lucky that one came in at that time. Cosmic rays were discovered, of course, in the beginning of the last century, when one found that there is something which comes from outside which ionizes air, which means there must be some charged particles or something coming which produces ions, and one found then ultimately that radiation comes from outside and not from the Earth. The development of the Emulsion block detectors was done better here, probably for the first time in this country than anywhere else. So the, the world has opened up. You don't see only in light, you see in many, many different, uh, different parts of the spectrum which comes. The universe speaks to us and we have to find out how it speaks and what it says and what's going on. For many people, mm -hmm of my generation who went into science because they did science, but there was also an underlying feeling that science is also for the country. We were influenced by Jawaharlal's rhetoric in this. And so that was the time when a large number of CSIR laboratories were open one after the other, but Naga was around, and then Homi Baba came, and Tata Institute was set up by yes. Homi Baba and the atomic energy laboratories came, and a large number of laboratories started growing in the country. But see, one has to remember, at the time of independence in this country, we didn't even make a radio. Even our pencils were imported, erasers were imported, sure, watches sure. were not there. I mean, at the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, which was the so-called cradle of the atomic energy sure. program, it was beginning to grow there. Yes. We had to sit down, people had to sit down and wire all the circuits and valves mm -hmm. and so on and so forth right from the beginning. And so starting from that, going to the success of the atomic energy program in reactors, in metallurgy, in all kinds of things, was I think rather unexpected mm -hmm. by most people. And similarly in space, we had nothing. Our, if our first rockets were carried on bicycles. From there to go to launchers, building satellites, mm -hmm. some of the best satellites in the world. This rather peculiar thing about Indian situation is that there are things which are considered by the world to be at the cutting edge and very difficult. Mm -hmm. Very few countries in the world have been able to do it. We have been able to do it. Why is it that what world considers difficult is easy for us, and what they consider to be very easy, for example, providing sanitation and water, is very difficult for us. In 1975, India embarked on a bold experiment to test, for the very first time in the world, the developmental and educational impact of direct television broadcast to remote villages. One of the key figures behind the satellite instructional television experiment was Professor Yashpal. You see, I was doing high energy physics, cosmic rays, mm -hmm. astrophysics, and one of the cosmic ray physicists at that time, a few years senior to me, was Vikram Sarabhai. Mm -hmm. And Vikram Sarabhai had this dream of uh, using satellites for bringing television to villages of India. People don't realize now how this unconnected we were. Telephones or television was not there, and it was under Sarabhai. Department of Atomic Energy initiative was taken to put a hundred TV sets around villages in Delhi. The challenge being to develop all the ground equipment oneself, not the important. We built Earth Station ourselves, and that was the kind of team where we developed the front end converters, the low noise amplifiers, Earth Stations. First dish antennas were developed in India, people forget, not abroad. There were 15 or 20 built by NASA just to test the satellite which they loaned to us. But they ran in hundreds and thousands were built in India and tested in India. And we felt that we have a lead and we'll go on building on this lead and in the, all this area we will develop cameras, we'll develop new kinds of TV sets, new earth stations and cover the world also including ourselves. Wishful thinking. 
anything which is effective these days in changing people's minds unfortunately gets appropriated for selling things. So in some sense, media is working now by and large as an anti-education, anti-thinking uh, enterprise the world over. Everybody knows in their bones that the bombing and killing children and women and people, no matter for what purpose, is not going to serve that purpose, it's for something else. But you can persuade people that no, 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 there is a great villain out there who we must somehow bomb his whole country to, in order to capture him and destroy him. Unfortunately, all powerful things, media, etc., become subservient to that. And same also to corporations which want to advertise. How come that while science flourishes, scientific temper diminishes? I don't think that by and large most scientists have a great scientific temper. You can have millions agitate in Europe, in America, everywhere, for example, for the war in Iraq. But all they have to say is, oh, don't worry about it. Once we start fighting and a few of our people die, patriotism will take over and everybody will support. Super specialists in technology of one area or in sciences of one area is a super specialist in area. These super specialists essentially are people who can be called upon and used by others for their ends. Make such a big bomb or such kind of a bomb in which Buildings are not destroyed, but people get killed. It's a challenge. To a super specialist, it's a challenge. And he'll be involved with that challenge. He doesn't care what it will do. Okay? So there is to assume that every super specialist will also worry about the larger aspects of where the world is going. I think it's terrible.